so in the last class we have already uh, understood how many different types of computer languages are there low level language and high level language and we have also seen what is binary language binary language is made up of combination of zeros and one now today we have to understand what is assembly language assembly language is also a low level language designed for specific type of processor it means uh, it uh, the, the code which you will write for assembly language it may differ for each and every system so it is again system dependent language the source code written in assembly language has to be converted into machine language because uh, in assembly language also we use a few simple uh, words like add subtract english words so that has to be converted into machine language to do uh, this a software program known as assembler is used for the conversion we use a translator or you can call a software which is named as assembler program written by programmer in assembly language is called the source program so if anybody if you are writing program in any language that program will be known as source program assembler convert this program into machine language which so that it can be directly understood by a computer which is which is also called as object program and the coding or the language or if the program written in a binary language or machine language that is known as object program it is a low level language that allow users to write program using alpha numeric manumic codes for the set of instructions now here we are also using decimal number system and we are also using uh, small keywords like add subtract multiply divide these keywords are also used so alpha alphabets are also uh, we are also using alphabets as well as numbers now what is the advantage of this type of language it is easy to understand and use uh, as compared to machine language because machine language if we were writing everything in the language of zeros and one it was really very difficult to understand and to write but here now the language is little easier than machine language because we are just using few simple words and uh, numerics also it is easy to locate and correct errors now here again because this is not a language of only zeros and ones it is easy to correct the errors and find out the errors from the coding it is easy to modify the code yes of course if there is a, if you can easily identify the errors and correct the codes uh, so it means you can easily modify it also disadvantage what is disadvantage of this type of language again it is machine dependent language machine dependent means the code will, may differ for every machine if uh, if i am doing some code if i am writing some code because here in this language we use registers or the memory addresses of this uh, computer so directly up memory ki addresses that is also known as registers ka address dete ho to registers names may vary according to system to system so suppose mere system mein r1 register jo hai wo addition ke liye use hota hai kisi aur ke system mein r1 register jo hai wo subtraction ke liye use hota hai so here the code will differ according to according to the machine which we are using it is difficult to remember syntax iska jo uh, syntax hai the way we used to write the code it is little difficult to understand and remember next is now a uh, high level language these are the most accepted computer language due to their simplicity and uniformity of being used with wide variety of computers now here we are using these language with the uh, n number of computers and everybody uh, the all the programmers in the world today they are using only high level languages because it is easy easy to understand for us we can simply write the coding in english language with the syntax uh, uh, decided for a particular language 
high level language have been designed for different tasks such as uh, different tasks such as uh, cobol for business purposes now there are different uh, high level languages which is designed specifically for different types of purposes for example cobol for business purposes if you have to do any coding for business then you can use the language cobol for train for scientific application if you have to uh, write Uh, some coding for uh, scientific applications uh, then you can use the language fortran c and uh, c++ java for system and application software development etc and if you are developing the software of any kind like for atm machine or for a company then you can use the languages like c++ or java all high level language need a translator because this is here in this type of language in all high level type of languages we are using english language words so it means definitely it they also require a translator to convert into binary code so that computer can understand so all high level language need a translator to convert into computer understandable binary code what are the advantages and disadvantages of high level language uh advantages they are easy to write debug and maintain because for us definitely it is easy to write the coding in a high level language debug means to find out the errors and to maintain uh, or to uh, do the programming in this type of language it is easier for us it is machine independent language it means if i am writing a code on my machine and i am uh, taking that code and putting it some into some other machine so it is totally machine independent it doesn't matter it, it will work here also it will work on that machine also but this is not same for uh, assembly language because if i am writing something on my machine maybe it will not work on some other machine because the names of the registers may get changed so uh, this is the advantage of high level language because that it is machine independent it means you whatever you are writing here it will work everywhere it is easy to learn definitely because it we are using just simple english language so it is easy to learn these types of languages what is the disadvantages of the, the these types of languages high level languages it takes additional translation time to translate the source code to machine code it is little uh, uh it is little time consuming process because uh, you have to computer has to translate from your language to machine code and then only computer will understand then it will give you the output again the output has to be converted into uh, from binary code to your language then only you will understand so translation time is extra here high level programs are comparatively slower than low level programs so slow wo isi liye hai they are slower just because they needs translation so it will take little time to do the, all the conversions now high, high level language in high level language there are total uh, three types of translators which can convert from um, from uh, uh, machine language to your language and from that is high level language and from high level language to again machine language so these are the three types of translators assembler interpreter and compiler assembler uh, we have already seen that assembler is used to convert from assembly language to machine language and then from machine language to again assembly language only now what is the difference between uh, compiler and interpreter compiler and interpreter both are doing the same thing they both are converting from high level language to machine language and then again the output has to be converted from machine language to high level language they both are doing the same thing but what is the difference then why we are having two uh, types of translators interpreter will convert line by line means once you will write the first line it will check your code if there will be any error it will tell you the number of errors you have typed in that line and then only it will allow you to move further so it will check line by line each code will be checked line by line only 
it will not allow you to move further but compiler will check the whole program in one go like if you have written a program of 100 line or maybe of 1000 line so you can compile the whole program at the end and it will tell you the uh, total number of errors and the error they will also it will also locate the errors like the error first error is in line number 10 then second error is in line number 14 then third error is in line number 89 and so on so a uh, compiler will convert the whole program in one go and uh, finally tell you the total number of errors and interpreter will convert line by line so all these all these two uh translator we are using the different languages like interpreter we are using in vb and compiler we are using in c c plus plus java we all here we are you we are using compiler right next is examples of high level languages now these are the different types of high level languages first and the most a uh, basic language is basic only this is the uh, first language developed for programming basic stands for beginners all purpose symbolic instruction code developed by uh, kemi and thompson in 1964 this language is popular among beginners because it is a simple english command and statement because here we use simple english command and statement so this is for all beginners. Next is Fortran. Fortran is a short form of formula translation. This language was developed by IBM in 1957. Fortran is useful for carrying out complicated scientific and mathematical calculations. So basically it is used for scientific and mathematical calculation. Next is C++ and Java. C++ was developed by uh, 80s and T Bell's lab. Uh, this is an object oriented programming language for uh, for creating Windows based application and system program. So basically C is used for creating Windows based application. It means using C you cannot create any application for Android. You cannot create any application for Apple, Apple laptops or desktop. Uh, because it is windows based program so if you are having windows installed in your system then only the applications or the software uh, uh, which was created in c++ you can use those programs or software next is java java was developed by james in usa this is also object oriented programming language and is popular because it is used for internet programming. Now, if you have to make some online software which will uh, work uh, uh, throughout the world, so these types of softwares can be developed using Java or and .NET also. So .NET is also a similar type of language like Java. Next is understanding binary system. Binary system, we have already seen uh, binary numbers consist of only two numbers. By means two. So here we have only two numbers that is zero and one, where zero represent the off state of current and one represent the on state of current. Means it's a machine language which can be directly understood by any machine. Means zero and one because every machine can understand electric electricity and zero means off and one means on okay so uh, through all the electronic devices works on the presence or absence of impulses or electricity the binary digit holds specific uh, special significance in a computer system that's why we all are using binary language that is why the basic language of computer which is directly understood by computer is binary language only next is now decimal number system decimal number system we already we all are aware of then all the numbers which we are using the combination of all uh, numbers from 0 to 9 they all are decimal number system 
the number system that you are using normally in mathematics is termed as decimal number system. Deci means 10. Means here we can have total 10 digits from 0 to 9. We have 10 digits. Uh, this number system is based on 10s because there are 10 digits. Uh, from combinations of 10 digits only we can design various numbers. Now all the numbers are made up of only these 10 numbers. In decimal number system, the successive position to the left of the decimal point represent units, tens, hundred, thousand, and so on. So whatever you will write before decimal will be represented with tens, hundred, thousand, and so on. Next is binary number system. Binary number system consists of only two numbers, that is zeros and ones. It means all the numbers uh, are the combination of only zeros and ones. So whatever you want to, to write, you can write only with the help of zero and one. The American standard code for information exchange, interchange, that is SCI values, have specified the code for various characters. Now, because we cannot um, convert directly everything to binary number system. So it means... Uh, like A, I cannot directly convert into binary number system. I need uh, to convert it into decimal number first. I need to convert A, capital A, into decimal number first. Then only I can convert it into binary number system. So uh, there are the fixed values for every alphabet and every character of the key or every key of the keyboard. And these fixed values are known as SCI codes. This code informs us how information reaches the CPU when a key is pressed. When I will press any key from the keyboard, first it will get converted into decimal number system. Then from decimal number system, we can convert using the SCI value. Decimal number system, how do you know how to do it? key ka ek ek number fix hota hai. And what is that number? This we will see now. This is the SI table, which is always fixed. Uh, from here, you can check like numbers, the keys of numbers on the keyboard. They are also given with some decimal, fixed decimal number, like 0 is 48, 1 is 49, 2 is 50, and so on. Now, similarly, uh, for capital A, the code is 65, for capital B, 66, and so on. And for small a, the code is 97, small b, 98, and so on. So, for every key of the keyboard, there is a fixed number and uh, in the decimal number system. And this is known as a sky code of that, that the key or that alphabet or that number. Like, if you will press this arrow uh, or the bracket. So bracket will be the coding code number for bracket will be 40. So this is how we can check what is the SCI value. You don't have to learn all these SCI values. You just have to learn from where A is getting started and then you can calculate what is the number, what is the code for Z or maybe for X. Right. Okay, so example for uh, example for uh, for example alphabet A the code is sixty five and this code has been mentioned in decimal number system. You must be wondering how can one know what message will be conveyed to computer in the form of electronic impulses here, yeah, right? Because it is very difficult if I write everything in the coding language of numbers only. It is very difficult to understand. Yes, it is. That's why we are using alphabets and uh, English language only and computer automatically convert from uh, your language to binary number system. Okay, now uh, how to do conversion? This we will understand in the next class now. How can we convert from decimal number system to binary number system? We have already converted A and we have uh, converted into decimal number system and that what is the decimal number system of, what is the decimal code for A? That is 65. 
Similarly, for B, it is 66. For small a, it is 95 or 97. For small a, it is 97. For small a, B, it is 98. So we have already converted. This is a table which will always remain fixed. So we have already converted all the keys of the keyboard into decimal number system. And this is known as SI code. Now in the next class, we will understand how can we convert a decimal number system into binary number system so that we can get the original, the, the message which can be understood by computer directly.